Hey and welcome to the second in our little mini series about the best beers and best breweries and best core beers in the world. If you haven't seen our best beers in the world, make sure you do, there's a link coming up here. Today we're going to be talking about the best brewery in the world, which means we might cover some of the same ground, Yes. but I think there's going to be some very different ground rules as we discuss <laughs> the greatest brewery in the world. <laughs> Question mark. So, Johnny, what's the first rule of Greatness Club? So, I think the first rule is that the brewery has to still be going. Yes. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the second rule, I think, is they have to make more than one beer. Right, okay. So, yeah, okay, I get what you're saying. It can't, it can't be a one-hit wonder kind of guy. Yeah, club. exactly. Like, you couldn't be the best musician in the world if you only ever wrote one song. Mm. Or could you? Or could, could, it be, you? could it be Thingies of Jupiter, Johnny? They wrote lots of songs. Train a great. <laughs> Third, rule Third rule is that just for this discussion, we have to have been there. Yes. Because I think that as well as, you know, the beer that they make and the philosophy that they have, it's also got to be the place that they've built. It's our greatest brewery in the world. Yeah, and hopefully yeah. through that we can learn what, what the best breweries in the world are and you guys yeah. can tell us at the end of the video what you think your best brewery in the world is. So... Um, like we did with the last one, let, let's come straight out there and say what we think the best brewery is in the world and see if we've changed our mind by the end. Bradley, go on. Mate, well, I've, my, my horse has already bolted out of the trap, if that's the expression. <laughs> that's not the expression. I think it's, yeah, something like that. Because basically, I've, already, I've fallen at the first hurdle, Johnny. Yeah. I'm, get, keep I'm them, going with the horse. Keep them cliches horse. coming, yeah, <laughs> really. My brewery doesn't exist on. anymore. Which brewery is that? Uh, it was Kalski. Uh, oh, right, Yeah, okay. I think... I mean, when I went there, again, it's very tied into experience, but mm. um, that was certainly one of the best beers I've ever drank in the world. Yeah, well, so if you haven't seen that video, um, it's basically, Kautzka was, sadly, a really great uh, bohemian lager brewery. They had three or four different varieties of varying strengths and some dark and some light lagers. Yeah. But essentially, it was a bombed out shell of a building, which they were slowly redoing to turn into a beautiful place again. Mm. And clearly, that cost a lot because they went out of business last year. Um, but their 12, so they're like 5% Czech lager, was one of the best beer experiences we've ever had. Sensational. And all, all of them were great. More of a serious answer, though, Johnny. Uh, Alchemist, I'm putting it out there. Okay. John Kimmich was, is like a sort of beer Yoda. Um, the man is strong with the force <laughs> in all respects. And yeah. I think he's, he's, he does something magical with everything he touches. Yep. Um, and I'm talking about the beers, but I'm also talking about the process, the way he thinks about stuff. Um, he'd be one of my ultimate beer heroes, really. I mean, he is, he is an eco-warrior yeah. and an incredible brewer. Yeah. You know, obviously him and, and his team. Um, He's basically... With lots of different styles. They're known for heady, yes. but they make Focal, which we talked about in the other yeah. video. Luscious is one of Luscious the best imperial styles in the world. Luscious is very good. Um, we have Crusher. I've had a Saison. I think it's called Farm's Daughter. That's very yeah. good. You know, whatever he turns his hand to, he can make golden. So he's ba he for me he's like like a Yoda character or like a mage or like a sort of some sort of wizard kind of guy. Yeah. Mythical status as as anything he touches is just like amazing. Um, let's crack a beer. Yeah. I think th this isn't my pick, but I think Cloudwater do have a good shout in terms of again their philosophical approach. You know, they're, they're so open, they champion diversity. Yes. Their um, sustainability-wise, very strong. And, you know, for a while, I think they were fifth best brewery on rate beer a couple of years in. And while they've dropped down those rankings, um, I, I think they've improved and they've started making delicious lagers, delicious stouts, imperial stouts. I haven't had much of their wild stuff, but I've heard that's really improving. Um, so I think they turn their hand to a lot of different things and do it well and do it ethically and Big i think time. in the uk they're probably the best shout that we've got yeah um hey yeah, paul i mean like again like in a similar way paul's a force for good in the world mm -hmm. right he's sort of crusading for for righteous stuff and, and making wicked beer as well uh my shout for best brewery in the world and it's so interesting that we do keep coming back to these two breweries is russian river <sighs> Yes. So Russian River, obviously Pliny, brilliant beer. 
um, Blind Pig, the straight up IPA, delicious beer. But what really impressed me when we went is A, that amazing p brew pub. Yeah. Like the vibe in there, the people in there, the food in there, the beer in there, all brewed next door. Well, not all brewed because they have two sides, mm. three sides now, I think. But that blew me away. But what really blew me away is the incredible uh, Belgian style beers that they were making. So they make, you know, one of the best West Coast IPAs in the world mm. and some of the best mixed fermentation, wild ales like Oud Bruins, Lambic style beers that I've ever tasted. Feeney has many strings to his bow. He does. Mm. And I think that's what really impresses me as a brewer. If you can turn your hand to something, um, to endless things and get it right, but also if you're seen to be championing all different kinds of styles and encouraging people to experiment palette wise because that's what slightly annoys me about a lot of these hype breweries that they you know i love the idea of sticking to one thing and nailing it yeah, right? yeah, yeah. but it has a negative effect which is that if you're going to get loads of love for that you're just going to like suck in people like a black hole into that style yes and Vinny, you know he could have just he could have built a monster brewery just with mm. pliny yeah but instead he went no i'm going to dedicate loads of my team my mind share and my physical space in the brewery to producing lots of other exciting stuff exactly so there's something about that as well so there's you can build a legacy you can build an empire out of a single beer but i think these great these great brewers have chosen a different path mm -hmm. um which is which is diversity and there's there's something about the fact these are all like they're like glorious leaders to the to the to, their to the revolution to their revolution in their own right. But many of the great breweries who have gone on to make sensational beer, a lot of them have started by doing something yeah. quite unusual. So, you know, Vinny, when he started Russian River, it was a small brewery on a, on a vineyard, and he was making, you know, pretty ambitious beer, 8% IPAs, which I don't think he was the first brewer of a double IPA, but certainly no. um, one of the first, and was making that on a vineyard, which you know probably weren't spending a lot of time promoting that mm. but still it made a lot of noise you know the alchemist invented new england and you know we know that john doesn't love the way that it's gone but he's stuck to his style of brewing another one would be allagash yeah um making an incredible range of belgian beers you know a much wider range of belgian beers than one brewery in belgium has ever produced you know crazy mixed firm stuff spontaneous lambic style beers delicious wits Belgian porters, American porters even. Um, just a really, really diverse brewery. Again, with a really strong sustainability outlook. Again, with, I think, two figureheads in Dodd and in Jason, the head, and Todd and the head brewer, Jason. Jason blew me away. He was instantly one of my favourite ever brewers, just his approach to it and his, you know, his humility when it comes to these beers, like talking about the importance of the ingredients as much as that process and challenging and we talked about yeah how brave Allagash White was as a first big beer. time yeah I mean like making that as like a core beer your main beer is I mean it's an insane style mm. to, to be like going out in the market with and I tell you what about the, the sort of explorer point at Allagash with those amphoras and all the crazy vessels that they were brewing in ancient Egyptian sort of stuff yeah hidden away in the back in the back rooms was like mind-blowing as well yeah absolutely you know experimentation can lead to greatness doing something safe yeah kind of really will all of these places were were super welcoming as well and i found like they had a great culture around them when mm -hmm. you were there i think it's like you know if you've got an open door you've probably got an open heart and you have an open mind and all of those things lead to to great things if you've got the right people there to to see it and to to do it um it's interesting we've talked mostly about Americans. Why do you think it's mostly American breweries that we're talking about? Is it like the ambition I, that's in that yeah. mindset? What the Americans have done is they've taken the traditions from Europe and uh, they've got hold them in such reverence, but they're not scared to be restrained by them. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think a lot of European breweries are sort of like tied in tra to tradition yeah, to I mean, their that's... detriment. Do you think America as well? Because they were the you know the craft beer scene in america was was like 20 years ahead of europe let's yeah say. for sure and and that was because you know to some extent they had the hops they had the hops and they had the pioneering spirit to yeah, use them yeah, in the yeah. way that they did um so yeah for me america is the best brewing nation on earth at the moment um for all of those reasons and it makes sense that the best brewery in the world would probably come from there So Bradley, we're, we've got to do an intervention here. I was editing through the video the last couple of days and I realized that we got, um, 
we got suckered into the Americana. We were too, too flag wavy about our, our wonderful brewing nation of choice. I think we pretty much didn't mention anyone outside <laughs> of the States apart from Cloudwater, which is, you know, it's unfair. So in between us filming that and us going to put this live, the Rate Beer Best 100 came out, which is basically what the internet says, what the data says is the highest rated breweries in the world. And you have to be super cautious with these rating websites because as the old saying goes, madness in the individual is rare, in the crowd it's the rule. Um, and there's lots of, lots of issues with rating websites, but it's a great little tool that we can use to maybe talk about some of the breweries which we forgot. Um, passing over the fact we didn't mention Hill Farmstead, which is number one, obviously, uh, and make great beer. There's loads of breweries from all over the world that we forgot about, including one about three miles from your house, Brad. Yeah, I mean, I could probably unicycle there in about an hour, and I, I can't unicycle. So, um, yeah, we, we missed out uh, one of one of London's, you know, oldest, best, the Colonel. The, the grandfathers of the UK craft beer movement, makers of great IPA, incredible wild ale, and also increasingly stuff like food lagers, amazing fruited wild ales. Yeah, quite possibly the best brewery in the world for my money, and at number 13 on the list. Uh, another person we missed, Delacen, who single-handedly changed the Belgian beer scene, particularly well, the Brussels beer scene, by bringing bitterness back to Belgium, by you know mixing tradition and, and British love of, of bitterness, um, and make they make Taras Bulba one of the best beers in the world, one of the best like brewers beers in the world. Any brewer you speak to loves that beer for how clean, fruity, and refreshing that is. It's they're an incredible brewery too. So you gotta you gotta have mad respect for them. They're basically market disruptors that went into this very traditional place and shook the apple cart a bit. Yeah. Um so yeah. yeah, they 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 should have been mentioned. And then Garage Project over in New Zealand make incredible IPAs, again incredible wild stuff. We haven't been there, so it's technically breaking the rules to mention them, but uh, I've met Joss the owner, I've had some of his amazing natural wines and beers. They should always be there. Really happy to see De Dollar made the list. Nice. Who made my favorite beer in the world, Arab beer. Not the best beer in the world, but it's my favorite. That's amazing to see. Um, but there's some pretty conspicuous things missing as well. Um, there's, there's only one lager focused brewery, which I think betrays the internet's bias against lager or the geeky internet's bias against lager. So Jack's Abbey made the list, but like Unia Titsia didn't. And I think they make the best range of Czech style beers in the world by a country mile and loads of like Franconian breweries that could easily be there. Um, I also think Burning Sky should be on there. I can't believe they haven't made the list. They make just like Colonel, like amazing hoppy beers, amazing session beers and incredible wild ales and, and spontaneous beers. Blows my mind they're not there, but the most obvious uh, conspicuously missing person or missing brewery, have you clocked this Bradley? I mean, it's amazing. It's a, it's an elephant in the room. Uh, the Alchemist isn't in the top. Yeah, where the f are the Alchemist? What the f? I can't understand how you can make two of the best IPAs in the world, two of the highest rated IPAs in the world, and not break the top 100. Particularly given the strength of everything else yeah, they make. Yeah, that's not considering Luscious or anything. Farmer's Daughter, Crusher, all the other IPAs that don't get talked about as much. Just, just baffling my take home from this johnny uh looking at rape beer list is it's amazing how just getting out of your own sphere and looking at what other people think can jog your memory and, and can make you just go oh yeah why didn't i think about that you know so we should always just look at everything embrace everything and not get insular on stuff because it's an exciting world of beer so the Ray Beer list definitely has some very worthy breweries on there. Also some very worthy breweries missing, but it's a significantly better list than ours was up until this point. Uh, and on that note, back to the video. So have you, have you changed your mind from Alchemist or do you still stick with it? Again, like similarly to the last video where I've said, I don't think we've discovered the best beer in the world necessarily. Mm -hmm. You I, don't think we've been to the best brewery Maybe either. not. I, I'm hopeful that there's a, better brewery out there Johnny I always want to chase down the next adventure mm. uh, see th this time I'm gonna I'm gonna diverge from you I I think I think we have been to the best brewery in the world and I think I think it's Russian River Oof. and if it's not I think it's Allagash Oof. and if it's not I think it's Alchemist but I, <laughs> I mean if I had to choose one place to go back to 
it would be Ru Russian River in a heartbeat. Yeah. To, to be in that brew pub, drinking those beers, that variation, having that vibe, having those people around me, and having that pepperoni pizza with a four dollar Pliny the Elder. I just don't think beer culture is is really going to beat that. No, and I, I mean it never changes. I'd agree with with that as a sensational beer experience um, and beer culture experience. I think. And the influence they've had on the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well. it, and, and, you know, it still felt incredibly homely and personal when you were mm. there. It, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a Goliath. It wasn't a monster. It was still like Mama used to make yeah. kind of vibe. I mean, now they do have a giant brewery down the road. Yeah. So yeah. it'd be really interesting to go back, check on the beers, check on the vibe. But I think that brew pub hopefully will remain the same. Um, Fingers crossed. So, I, I mean, basically, we're going to go back to Russian River at some point on this channel, <laughs> for certain. Um, guys, we'd love to know what you think. So stick to our three rules, otherwise this could get out of hand in the comments. But So it's got to still be going, it's got to produce more than one beer, and you've got to have been there. And using those three rules, we'd love to know what you think the best brewery in the world probably is. And if, we, if again, you guys all talk about the same brewery and we haven't been there, then we promise when we can start traveling again, we will go to those places. Um, in the meantime, Cloudwater will do, won't it? Yeah, why not, eh? Cheers.